أما بعد الحمد لله after going through the stories of Adam عليه السلام and then Nuh and Hud and Salih عليه السلام أجمعين we now come to one of the most important stories of the one of the most important figures that we will study insha'Allah in this series. In fact, the most important figure that we will study in this series is the one that we're going to start insha'Allah tonight. And that is the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam is special. And that's why, that's why also his story is very special. He is special because he has reached with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the highest levels of Ubudiyya to Allah Azza wa Jal that he was called what? Khalil al-Rahman and the Khalil is the beloved of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Khalil, Allah Azza wa Jal you know can love and he loves a lot of people but the Khilla or the Khulla is special is special um, with the way or the where that comes from, that word itself, where it comes from, when we say Khalil, where it comes from, the Khalil is the one whose love penetrates the heart. Okay? All the valleys, all, all, all the... يتخلل um, القلب. Uh, so, so every part, every nook and cranny, as they say, every nook and cranny, every part of the heart is filled with that love. So because they loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to that extent... Allah was greatest in their heart and they've reached a level of ubudiyya that no one else can reach only they too so of all of humanity we have the khulla is for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Ibrahim alayhi wa alayhi ala nabiyyina afdalu salati wa salam only for those two that's why the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says in the hadith law kuntu muttakhidan khalila he says, if I were to take a khalil from the people of this earth, means a person who is very, very close to me, that he is so close that no one else can reach that level of love for me and his love, my love for him and his love for me. If I were to take anyone from on the face of this earth, it would be Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But he says, but Allah has taken me a khalil like he has taken Ibrahim a khalil. So فَصَاحِبُكُمْ خَلِيلُ اللَّهِ So he is the Khalil of Allah Azza wa Jal. And there is only one who can assume this position in your heart. Not multiples. That's what I said. You can love a lot of people, but that, that level only belongs to one. That's why he said, it cannot be Allah and somebody else. If I were to take anybody else, it would be Abu Bakr. He's the best of the best. But it cannot be anyone except Allah Azza wa Jal. So that is the only spot that reserved for Allah Azza wa Jal. So... In addition to the Prophet ﷺ, who's the only one who were able to achieve that? Ibrahim ﷺ. So te that tells you how special he is. And as I said, of all the Prophets that we're going to study, he's the best. He's called, called also the father of the Prophets. Why he is he called the father of the Prophets? Because it is said, it is said that all the prophets that came after Ibrahim alayhi salam and all the books that came after Ibrahim alayhi salam were from his descendants. Wallahu alam. It is said all have come from his descendants. And you have a very special connection to Ibrahim as well. You mention him every day, right? You mention his name. You don't notice it, right? You don't notice. Oh, I, I mention his name every day, don't I? In the tashahud. Every day you talk about Ibrahim. Every day you talk about Ibrahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. So every single day, not once, not twice, not three times, but you talk about Ibrahim often. And that is a reminder of how fundamental Ibrahim was in da'wah, in Islam, in your Islam. Huh? That he was an example for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So... Allah Azza wa Jal says, describing Ibrahim in the Quran, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan, qanitan lillahi hanifa, wa lam yakum min al mushrikeen. Ibrahim was an ummah. What does an ummah mean? He was an imam. What does an imam mean? A leader. Everyone sees and follows. See, as an example. A leader, an example. He was an imam. Qanitan lillah, devoted to Allah. Hanifa, turning to Allah completely in devotion and away from anyone. 
besides Allah Azza wa Jal. And he was not of the mushrikeen. Shakiran li an'umi. He was thankful of Allah's bounties. Whatever Allah gave him, he was thankful of it. Ijtabahu wa hadahu ila sirat al-mustaqeem. Allah selected him and guided him to the straight path. Huh? وَأَتَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ We've given him good in this life, and in the akhirah he's among the righteous. Then Allah says, ثُمَّ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ Speaking to who? Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Then we revealed to you, and اتَّبِعْ That follow the millah of Ibrahim Hanifa وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ So Allah tells Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, follow the millah of Ibrahim, meaning the religion, the path. Milla is deen. So follow the deen, the milla, the path of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Hanifa. Hanifa meaning turning to Allah Azza wa Jal completely and away from uh, uh, any, any, any idols, any taghut, any, anything that would be worshipped other than Allah. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And then he also told his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, to declare and to say to himself, إِنَّنِي هَدَانِي إِلَى رَبِّي إِنَّنِي هَدَانِي رَبِّي إِلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Allah guided me to a straight path, deenan khiyama. A religion that is straight, Millat Ibrahim Hanifa. So he's telling the Arabs and the non Arabs and everybody who's going to come, Allah guided me to a straight path, the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, the Millah of Ibrahim. Because people will dispute is Ibrahim Jewish? Is Ibrahim Christian? Everyone wants a piece of Ibrahim. Everybody claims Ibrahim alayhi salam. So he's saying to him, this is the Milla of Ibrahim. And Allah then also says, Ibrahima illa man safiha nafsa. Who would want to turn away and not desire the Milla, the religion, the path of Ibrahim, except one who demeans himself? Meaning if you have any respect for yourself, if you want any, have any honor for yourself, you'll follow the Milla of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Otherwise, you'd be following what? Idols, the shaitan, as you said, idols, shaitan, uh, asnam, awthan, that's what you'll be following. That's the ayah here that I should have mentioned here. When Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا وَإِبْرَاهِيمٍ We have sent Nuh and Ibrahim, وَجَعَلْنَا فِي ذُرِّيَّتِهِمَا النُّبُوَّةَ وَالْكِتَابِ We've put in their descendants, Nubuwa, prophethood, and the books. So it seems that after Ibrahim alayhi salam, all prophets come from Ibrahim, from his progeny. طيب. Why was Ibrahim alayhi salam special? And we're going to be, inshallah, seeing from now till we finish this story, the virtues of Ibrahim. What made him an imam? What made him so special? The first thing is Allah azza wa jal says about him that Allah tested him, gave him commands, and Ibrahim fulfilled those. So it says, وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ الَّذِي وَفَّى Ibrahim who fulfilled. Fulfilled what? Fulfilled Allah's command. In another ayah it says, وَإِذْ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ Allah tested Ibrahim with commands. Kalimat, statements. What are these statements? Commands from Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether these are religious commands, yeah, Ibrahim, do this, do not do that, or Allah's decree. Allah tested him. What was Ibrahim's response? فَأَتَمَّهُنْ He completed them. Hmm? Yani, so, th this is significant. He didn't just, you know, uh, succeed. He didn't just, you know, pass the test. No, he, he, got, he got what? Uh, a plus. فَأَتَمَّهُنَّ yeah, You would not be able, not a lot of people other than him, and then our Prophet وسلم, can claim that. فَأَتَمَّهُنْ Meaning complete. Complete. Nothing was left of it. فَأَتَمَّهُنْ What are these commands? It's everything that Allah Azza wa had given him. So some of the Sahaba mentioned that Allah Azza wa gave him Sunan Al-Fitra. Yani, ya Ibrahim, circumcision. Ya Ibrahim, you know, cut this. Ya Ibrahim, do this, do this, do this. But it's not only that. It's not only that. We'll, we'll discover even about Sunan Al-Fitra that, you know, he was the first or to be circumcised. So, but it's not that. It's everything. It's everything that Allah has tested him with. He found him to be humble, found him to be responsive, found him to be sub submitting to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he didn't only say yes, he took it all the way to completion. فَأَتَمَّهُنْ What was the reward of that? قَالَ إِنِّي جَعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا He says, I'm going to make you an imam to all people. 
Because he did this, he listened to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely. And here's the first lesson, inshallah, for tonight. When you listen to Allah, what does Allah do? Rewards you and elevate you. That's always the case. So he, how did he become an imam, an example to everybody? That today, the Jews claim him and they say he is our father. Christians claim him and respect him. They say he is our father. Muslims, they say he is our father, right? We say that in our adhkar. Ya Allah, you know, help us to follow the milla of our father Ibrahim. You're saying it, if you're saying your adhkar, he's saying that he's your father. You're claiming him as a father. Everybody claiming Ibrahim. So by what, by what did he deserve this? But that he's listened to Allah Azza wa Jal, so he honored him so that everybody is praising him. Alayhi salam. And everybody respects him and everybody wants to belong to him. So this is the first lesson, inshallah, for tonight. Listen to Allah Azza wa Jal and see the honor that Allah will give you. The opposite will bring the opposite. Uh, you don't listen to Allah, you're going to lose that honor. So Ibrahim says, وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي He says, Ya Allah, and from my descendants, also grant that to my descendants that they also become imams, example, models. And that is part of what everybody should desire for himself and for his children. وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Ya Allah, make me an example so that I'm doing good and also people notice that I'm doing good so that what they would praise me. Is that why I'm doing it? So I want them what? To follow, right? To follow. So that they can see what I'm doing and they would follow it. So what do I get from that? Uh, ah, that it is. I get reward. It's not praise and recognition and they'll write my name and books about me. It's not that is that I'll get reward from it. So I will, it's as if you've not only lived one life, but multiple lives. Because every everybody who copies what you're doing gives you hasanat. So it'd be as if, you know, subhanAllah, you didn't only live for 60 years. You lived for 120 years. Or you lived for 200 or 300 years. Because all of these hasanat are given to you. So as a lift, you lived their life as well. So the greatest reward that you, the greatest thing that you can ask from Allah Azza wa make me righteous and make others notice this righteousness and follow it. So he says Allah Azza wa also grant my descendants that they also become imams in righteousness, calling to your tawheed, calling to your obedience. So Allah Azza wa says, لا ينال عهد الظالمين. He says they're going to be among your descendants, those who will transgress, those who will not listen, those who will be oppressors. They're going to be granted that. But those who do, and follow your path, they will be granted this, but not everybody. Ibrahim alayhi salam. What is his father's name? Azar. We have that in the Quran. Ibrahim speaking to his father, Azar. He says, Are you taking idols as objects of worship, as gods? So he's speaking to his father, Azar. And it's mentioned in the Quran. And it's different than the name that they claim that Ibrahim had, uh, Ibrahim's father had in the Bible. In the Bible, they give him a different name. The Quran gives him a different name. So among the two, which one is more reliable? Definitely, the Quran. So the name of uh, Ibrahim's father is Azar. And some researchers have claimed that, subhanAllah, they're trying to reconcile the name, and it's possible, Allahu A'lam, uh, because the name is not Hebrew. It's not a Hebrew name, right? So it's because it precedes uh, Hebrew. And Ibrahim was not Hebrew, right? Ibrahim, Wallahu A'lam, they say he came from the area of Iraq. Right? And he migrated from there. Wallahu A'lam, right? We don't have anything in the Quran and Sunnah to confirm this. But people of history and whatever, they say that he came from that area of Iraq and then he migrated to al ardul Mubarak, the blessed land, to Philistine. Um, anyway, so it's not a Hebrew name. So they say that the Quran has translated his name from the original language. So in Arabic, it will be Azar. But in a different language, it will be the name probably that the Bible claims the father Ibrahim had. Wallahu alam. But anyway, the name is Azar. So, and they lived, as I said, in that area. And we know of his people from the Quran, right, that they worshipped idols. Because he tells his father, Are you taking idols as gods? And possibly, possibly, they've worshipped 
uh, the planets as well. Wallahu a'lam. So in the books of history and in the books of tafsir, they said that they could have also been worshipping planets as well, or worshipping two at the same time. Because a lot of people who, when they are worshipping the idol, uh, the sanam, are they worshipping the exact stone itself, you think? Is it that the stone, they think that the stone is supernatural, or is it connected to something supernatural? It's connected. So sometimes it's connected to the planets or to connected to some other god. So the stone itself, like when you, I don't want to knock on the table, but if you, like an object like this, there's nothing miraculous about it. But it's connected to something miraculous. So it could be that they thought that these um, uh, idols embody the power of the planets, the planet of the uh, power of the stars, the power of something else. So idols and possibly also planets. And there maybe is a hint at it when Ibrahim alayhi salam and that exchange between him and his people looks at the stars, looks at the planets and have, has the following conversation with them. Allah Azza wa says about him in Surah Al-An'am وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ We are showing Ibrahim, the malakut, the creation of the heavens and the earth, the sky and the earth. وَلِيَكُونَ So that he will have certainty of faith. What does that mean is that Allah Azza wa Jal had shown him in the sense that he had opened his eyes so that he can see the wisdom in what Allah's creation, the perfection in Allah's creation and how all of this reflects the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his power and not anything of that can be attributed to the idols or anything less than Allah. So Nuri Ibrahim Malakut meaning that we've opened his eyes to see that all of this testifies to the oneness of Allah. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ When it was night, رَأَى كَوْكَبَ He saw a planet. What did he say about it? هَذَا رَبِّي This is my Rabb. Now the question here, was Ibrahim alayhi salam at that moment trying to figure out who Allah is or was he teaching his people? Teaching. Most likely is that he was teaching his people. So he's progressing, taking them one step, you know, step by step. So he begins with the smaller object to show something at the end. رأى كوكبة. So he saw a planet. قال هذا ربي. This is my Rabb. This is my, the creator, the sustainer, the provider. فلما أفل, when it set, when it disappeared, قال لا أحب الآفلين. He says, I do not like what sets. Why is that? What was he trying to tell them? Hmm? Yeah, that's weakness. You know, if this, is, if this is a planet, and it's supposed to be God, God is supposed to be what? Powerful. Always present. But if it appears and disappears, appears and disappears, what does that mean? It's weak. It's weak. Where is it? Okay, so it's not as strong. It's not as visible. So th this is weak. So he says, I don't like what sets. It cannot be a creator. Right? It cannot be a creator. It cannot be God. Then he moved on to the next one. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الْقَمَرَ بَازِغَ The moon is shining. Right? Full moon. This is bigger, right? قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي This is my Rabb. فَلَمَّا أَفَلْ So when it also said, قَالَ لَإِنْ لَمْ يَهْدِنِي رَبِّي لَأَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الضَّالِّينَ He says, if my Rabb does not guide me, I'll be among the misguided. So again, this moon, which is bigger. Now, this moon deserves to be a God more than the planet. Because it's bigger. But it also said, so he said, this cannot be. فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسِ Now the sun. Now you see the sun every, every day. Right? But here is trying to show them something. So here's the sun. Now with the sun, that's the biggest thing that you can see in the sky. Huh? That's the most important thing that you can see in the sky. If the sun is not going to be God, you know, as we will find out, it's not going to be God, then God is not visible to you. Say, There's nothing greater the naked eye, then the sun. So when he says the sun, and هذا أكبر, this is, this is bigger, but then it also set. So the sun also gets weak, becomes strong, and then weak again, and then it goes away. So he says also that cannot be agreed. So فلما أفلت, when it said, قال يا قوم إني بريء مما تشركون. He says, people, I am innocent of what you associate with Allah Azza wa Jal. Now he's giving them that message. I have directed my face inni wajjahtu wajhiya lilladhi fatar to the one who created out of nothing the heavens and the earth Hanifa uh, turning to him alone and I'm not of the polytheist 
And then Allah says, وَحَاجَّهُ قَوْمُهُ Are they going to just leave him, say all of that? No. And then they started to argue with him. وَحَاجَّهُ said They started to argue with him. What, what are you saying? Allah doesn't tell us what they say. But they say they just started to argue with him after all of this. He says, are you arguing about, are you arguing with me after Allah has guided me? You know, after I told you all of this. And this is the proof. What are you still arguing about? So it seems here, right, that they weren't happy with his conclusion. What are you, what are you telling us? That none of the things that we are seeing could be God and it is invisible to us? He says, yes. So arguing with him. And he says, وَلَا أَخَافُ مَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ إِلَّا أَيَّ شَاءَ رَبِّ شَيْءٍ And he says, I'm not afraid of what you associate with Allah unless Allah wishes for something to happen. And here, there is a hint that they were starting to threaten him that if you don't believe, our gods will do this and that to you. So it's implicit in the Quran. But why does he say, I'm not afraid of what you associate with Allah? Because it's there, they're telling him, you know what, if you don't believe in this, what's going to happen to you? And if you don't touch this and seek blessings from this, is what's going to happen to you? So what does he say? And I do not, I'm not afraid of it. Nothing will happen to me except if Allah wishes something. Then it will happen, not because of them, but because of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal knows or had encompassed everything in knowledge. And then he says, and how can I, and how, why should I be afraid? Of what you associate with Allah Azza wa Jal, and you are not afraid that you have committed idolatry. That you are not afraid that you have associated others with Allah Azza wa Jal, which He did not grant you, uh, grant you power to do. Which of us deserves security, really? You know, you're trying to threaten me with what you worship, and you are not afraid that you have committed shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal. So, which of the two should be frightened, me or you? So you see here the difference. So they tried to frighten him by saying that these inferior beings, and some of them are stone, will harm you. He said, you're trying to make me afraid because of these things. And you're not afraid of what you have done when it came to Allah Azza wa Jalla, that he could punish you at any moment. You're the ones who should be afraid, not me. Allah is on my side. He's not on your side. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَتِلْكَ حُجَّتُنَا أَتَيْنَاهَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ نَرْفَعُ دَرَجَاتٍ مَنَّ شَاءَ He says, this is our hujja, this is our proof that we have given Ibrahim alayhi salam against his people. And we elevate in rank whomever we wishes. That Allah Azza wa Jal then had blessed Ibrahim with ilm, with knowledge, with insight, with, 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 with wisdom. And he was engaging in da'wah with, Allah, with, with, uh, the, uh, with his people. Maybe part of the malakut, part of the creation, part of the certainty that Allah Azza wa was giving Ibrahim alayhi salam is that incident in Surah Al-Baqarah. إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرَنِي كَيْفَ تُحِيِّ الْمَوْتَ It's Ibrahim asked Allah Azza wa show me how you bring the dead back to life. How do you resurrect? So Allah Azza wa asked him, أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ don't, don't you have iman? قَالَ بَلَا He says, indeed I do. وَلَكِنْ what did, he, why did he, what did he say? لِيَطْمَئِنَّ So that my heart will have certainty. So here the question is, was Ibrahim in doubt when he was asking Allah Azza wa Jal, show me how do you bring the dead back to life? Was he in doubt? So why wasn't he in doubt? Because Allah asks him, أَوَلَمْ تُؤْمِنْ Don't you have iman? And Allah knows, of course knows the heart of Ibrahim. But this is also for our sake. So for our sake, Allah is also asking him, don't you have iman? He says, indeed I have iman, walakin liyatma'inna, so that my heart will have certainty. So why was he asking for it? Ibrahim definitely, like alhamdulillah, we believe, well, his belief is stronger than us, of course, but we believe and he believes that Allah Azza wa Jal brings the dead back to life. But this is a belief that we have, but our belief maybe is at this level. But what if Allah shows it to you? Ah, Climbs, it climbs up. So Ibrahim alayhi salam wants to ascend in certainty. He has certainty. He has certainty, but he wants to ascend in certainty. And he said that ascension in yaqeen. And they talk about, you know, ilmu al yaqini wa aynu al yaqini wa haqqu al yaqeen. These are levels of yaqeen. Not all certainty is the same. So one certainty is ilmu al yaqeen. When you know that something is to be true. That's ilm al-yaqeen. Ayn al-yaqeen is when you see it. 
حق اليقين is when you experience it. One, two, three. These are levels of yaqeen. So the first one would they say like, if I tell you that behind this mountain, there is a lake. Okay, and you believe me, that's certainty of knowledge. If you climb the mountain and you see, see the lake for yourself, you've seen it with your eyes. If you go down that mountain and you go to the lake and you drink from its water, certainty. Huh? Because your eyes, you could say, well, my eyes could be deceiving me, or, but now that you've experienced it. So Ibrahim السلام, wanted that. So Allah Azza wa tells him what? Take, take four birds, cut them, mix them together, put them on different mountains, then ask them to come to you and they will come flying to you. So here he has seen these birds that he had killed with his own hands come back to life. And that gives him more certainty, right? And you need that certainty. And there is nothing wrong with asking for more certainty because the more that you have of it, the more that you'll be able to encounter doubts and the more that you'll be able to withstand, you know, and be able to prevail in your da'wah. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal documents in, in, in a little bit of detail Ibrahim's encounter with his people and what he had said to them and how he, how he invited them to the truth and what he did with their idols. And you know the story, but there's still benefit in going through it. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ Allah said, we've guided Ibrahim. We've guided Ibrahim. Some of the Mufassireen, they've said that this ayah, we've guided Ibrahim from before, they say it means that we've guided him when he was young. Some said, no, this means that we've guided him, you know, before the other prophets that we're going to talk about, before Musa, before Isa. So others said, no, he was guided when he was young. What is the example of this guidance in following his change? When he asked his father and his people, what are these idols? What are these idols, the asnam, that you are worshipping? And he didn't say just ta'budun, worshipping. He says aqifun, meaning you're constant in worshipping it. You know the i'tikaf that we do in the masjid? Why do we call it i'tikaf? Because you're always here. Aqifun for these idols, they're always worshipping these idols. So just, just worship is always worshipping these idols. Why are you doing that? What is their response? Qalu wajadna aba'ana laha abidin. We saw our fathers doing this. That's it. <laughs> that is it. They don't have a better response to it except say we saw our fathers doing just worshiping like that and we're doing the same thing. There is no, there's no reason why they're doing it except that the parents were, they were doing it. So he says, you know, you and your parents all were misguided, completely misguided. And I want you to notice that if he, and he's a feta as he's, what we're talking about, a feta, we're talking about him being in his teens or in his 20s. Because they will say, قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ يَذْكُرُهُمْ We've heard of a feta talking about our idols. His name is Ibrahim. A feta is a person who is not yet 30. So he's in his teens or 20s. So he's standing up to his father. He's standing up to all of his people and he's talking to them like this. So imagine the strength that he had, alayhi salam. And he's, he's dismissing their entire culture because... It's not like he's standing up and telling them drinking is bad, and of course, and telling them, you know, you know, your gender or you know what you think about gender is bad. Imagine if you just stand up in society today and just pick one topic of these controversial topics, and you just oppose the people, oppose what is common. What is going to happen to you? Yeah, what's going to happen? You'll be attacked left and right. He's here standing up to uh, to challenge their foundation. The foundation of their culture, the foundation of the economy, the foundation of their thinking, everything. Huh? That these idols are their obsession. Everything revolves around them. So he says, all of you are misguided. So they say, Ajitana bil I says, yeah, they're telling him, Ajitana bil are you saying the truth or are you just mocking us, playing with us? Are you serious? In a sense. Or are you just playing with us? He says, no, your Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the one who created him from nothing, and I am a witness from that. And he says, what Allahi, by Allah, I'm going to plot against your idols when you leave. Huh? So either he said that statement, he says, by Allah, I'll plot against your idols. Either he said it to himself huh, in secret, or he said it in public, or maybe it was in between. He said it, and some people heard it, but not everybody heard it. Otherwise, when they come back after he destroys it, they wouldn't have to ask, well, who did this? 
So probably he said it to himself, what Allah, by Allah, when you leave, I'm going to plot against your idols. I'm going to do something to them. And then it says in another sequence of ayat, فَنَظَرَ نَظْرَةً فِي النُّجُومِ فَقَالَ إِنِّي سَقِيمٌ So they asked him, they said, it is said, that they're going to leave the city because they have a festival outside the city. So everybody was to leave. So they invited Ibrahim as well. Come with us. So it says in another sequence of ayat, فَنَظَرَ نَظْرَةً فِي النُّجُومِ فَقَالَ And he looked at the stars and he said, I am sick. I'm not going to go with you. I am sick. Okay, well, I'll, I'll make a comment about this, inshallah, at the end of the story. So they left him. Okay. So when they left him, فَجَعَلَهُمْ جُذَاذًا إِلَّا كَبِيرًا لَهُمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ يَرْجِعُونَ When they left and he was alone, he went to the idols and he broke them all and made them into rubble except the grand, main, big idol right there in the middle. He left him. لَعَلَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ يَرْجِعُونَ Perhaps they're going to go back to him or to it. Perhaps. Why did he leave it? So that they either would go back to that big idol or they would go back to Ibrahim السلام, and ask him what happened. So, لَعَلَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ إِلَيْهِ هُو Either idols or to Ibrahim السلام. And the other sequence of ayat, it says what he, what he told them. فَرَغَ إِلَىٰ آلِهَتِهِمْ He went to the idols before he destroyed them. فَقَالَ أَلَا تَأْكُلُونَ He says, don't you eat? مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَنْطِقُونَ Why don't you talk? فَرَغَ عَلَيْهِمْ ضَرْبًا بِالْيَمِينَ And he started hitting them with his right hand. Or it says, Bilyamin, as mightily, as strongly as he can. I mean, he was destroying, huh? He was destroying all of them. Bilyamin meaning with, with strength. He was upset with it. So, when they came back, what did they notice? All of them are destroyed. And Ibrahim, by the way, I shouldn't you know, uh, leave that without a comment. Why did he say, Why don't you eat? Huh? Why don't you speak? I mean, at least at the level of, right? Why don't you eat? Why don't you eat? At least you'd be at a level of humans. Humans eat. You're less. You're even less. Tell you, but you're not going to eat. At least talk. You don't even talk. Huh? So it, this tells you that, this tells you that one of the qualities, one of the sifat of the creator is that he talks. He's able to express. Okay, you're not going to talk. Now, can you defend yourself? So he started hitting, and he destroys them. And that is evidence in itself that if you cannot protect yourself, can you protect others? No. Now somebody may say, well, okay, okay, it's like if an atheist or whatever, I'm going to, you know, God forbid, insult God. He's not going to do anything to me. That's proof. It's the same thing. We say it's not the same thing. Because if you try to insult, you didn't harm God at all. And Allah is patient with you. He's going to give you time. Here, this is an attack on that idol, that God, that supposed God. So it's either you or that God. So if you're able to destroy that God, it means that it's not a God at all. Can you destroy Allah Azza wa No, you cannot attack Him. But these idols you can attack, these stones you can attack. So when He attacked them, why is it that you cannot even defend yourselves? That means that you are not in any way divine. So when they came here and they asked, Man fa'ala hadha bi alihatina? Who did this to our, did to our gods? And they say, we heard a young man who's called Ibrahim, talking about them. Ah, we don't trust him. That way. We left him alone. We left him alone, and he doesn't like them anyway. It must be him. Say, so bring him. Meaning in front of everybody, while everybody's watching, so that they would witness what he did and what's going to happen to him, if it's proven that this is him. He says, did you do this to our idols, or our, to our gods, Ya Ibrahim? Do you know the one did this? He says, no, the big one is the one who did this. So ask them uh, if they can talk. Yeah. Maybe he got jealous and he did not want you to worship everybody. In addition, right, to him, he wanted to be worshipped by himself. So he destroyed everybody and came back and he's still in his place, you know, like hey, we've always known him. So you ask him, who did this? Why did you do this? What happened? So... فَرَجَعُوا إِلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ فَقَالُوا إِنَّكُمْ أَنْتُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ so They said they came back to their senses. And they said, no, you're the ones who are in the wrong. So for a moment, they had clarity. Subhanallah, for a moment, 
they had the they got the message and they had clarity. They they turned to each other and they said, "Well, that doesn't make sense that they be gods, and you're the ones who are wrong in, in worshiping all." Of, so it worked actually. And here's what he wanted to do. It worked because it delivered the message to them. But subhanAllah, I don't know what happened to them afterwards. Is it that somebody else objected or whatever? Then they turned on their heels again. They changed their mind again. Right? Now they want to blame Ibrahim. You know that they don't talk. Why do you want us to ask him to talk? You know that they don't talk. So for a moment they understood what Ibrahim wanted from them. That they cannot talk so they cannot be God. So they cannot worship them. They cannot do... It made all sense to all of them. But then they changed, subhanAllah. So he tells them, how are you worshipping instead of Allah Azza wa Jal, something that cannot benefit you, nor can harm you? Woe to you on what you worship instead of Allah Azza wa Jal. Do you don't have minds? So what is their response? We can't argue with them. And that is here, maybe the second, if this is, could be a second, but we're happy to have seen a lot of lessons. But... The main second main lesson is that the weak, when they have no arguments, no proofs anymore, what do they want to do? Kill you. That's it. Right? We can't argue with you anymore. We, can't, we, can't, we don't have any evidence. And you're a nuisance anyway. And we don't want to hear any of this because you make us feel bad about ourselves. That's it. We're just going to kill you. We want to just silence you. He says, no, burn him. And not just burn him. You're like, really severely burn him. It's not like just light a match and throw it on him and just, that's it. No, no, they built an entire big structure. And it is said, wallahu a'lam, right? It's not like documented in a hadith, but history. That they've been collecting wood for it for days. Huh? And you can imagine it that that could be true. Why? Because you say, you know what he did to our idols? Everyone who loves these idols, you know, pick up something and bring so can we burn him. So they'll be doing it for days, collecting this, collecting this, collecting that. It's a whole structure because they throw it in him. They throw him in that great fire. Right? It says in the other sequence of ayat, He says, build a structure for him and throw him in the blazing fire. So it's not just a small fire that they were lighting. A grand structure that they're throwing in the, in the fire. And Allah says, فَأَرَادُوا بِهِ كَيْدَ فَجَعَلْنَاهُمُ الْأَسْفَلِينَ They wanted to uh, uh, you know, destroy him. They wanted to kill him, to plot against him. فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ We destroyed them. Right? We made him those who are lower. وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ And he said, I'm going to go to Allah. As, I'm migrating to Allah Azza wa Jal and he will guide me. And that is his migration, alayhi salam, from his people to Palestine, to Asham, the land of Asham. So Allah Azza wa says in the ayah that we were reading, وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَلُوطًا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا لِلْعَالَمِينَ He says, and we have saved him and Lut uh, to the land that we have blessed for humanity. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ نَافِلًا وَكُلًّا جَعَلْنَا صَالِحِينَ And we have granted him Ishaq and Yaqub as extra nafila, as something extra blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal, and we made them righteous. So it says also in another ayah that one of the one of the uh, reason or the reason that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala blessed him with this progeny, when he turned away from them, turned away from them and migrated leaving their idols and leaving their idolatry and leaving the, that, what they were doing that upsets Allah Azza wa Jal. So he left family, he left tribe, he left father and behind, he left people. He left and he was alone, Allah Azza wa Jal granted him progeny. And see how Allah Azza wa Jal, here what I want you to see, and how Allah Azza wa Jal compensated Ibrahim and gave him better than the thing that he had left. He left his father, and he left his family and he left his city behind for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And for that, what did Allah give him? Children. He gave him children. It took a while, but Allah Azza wa Jal gave him children. And of the two best children that a person can imagine, Ismail and Ishaq, and these children will have children and children who are of the best children that, Allah, that anyone can wish for. So when you leave something for Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah gives you something. So Ibn Abbas, عنه, he says, Hasbunallahu 
ونعم الوكيل قالها إبراهيم عليه السلام حين ألقي في النار وقالها محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم حين قيل له حين قالوا إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوهم He says حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل Allah is sufficient for me and he is the best dispenser of affairs the one, best one that you can rely on Ibrahim alayhi salam said it when he was thrown into the fire. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said it when people threatened him and said, people have gathered, had amassed, amassed, amassed forces to attack you, so fear them. فَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ So this is a statement to remember. The two best people, Ibrahim and Muhammad alayhi wa sallam, said it at times of hardship and difficulty. So who are you going to trust? Who are you going to rely on? Who's going to protect you? Hasbu Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me. Not just a statement. Allah is sufficient for me. And he's the one, best one to rely on. So he was thrown in the fire. What happened? Qulna ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. We said to the fire to be cold and peaceful for Ibrahim. So the fire itself, the fire itself uh, was turned. Uh, its nature uh, stopped. Because of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah told the fire, stop burning, and it stopped burning. So again, subhanAllah, here you see the power of Allah Azza wa Jal, that when you do what Allah wants, when you do what Allah wants, Allah takes care of the rest. You don't have to worry about the consequences. If it is this thing, something that Allah is pleased with. So here, Ibrahim stood up and said, worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone, and you think to yourself, what, is, what really was his crime? What really was his crime for you to try to kill him like that? Huh? Really had, I mean, the crime does not fit, and the punishment does not fit whatever he was doing. But they tried to, subhanAllah, to silence him, and Allah Azza wa said no, because Ibrahim was obedient to Allah Azza wa And it is said, though, I mean, that, yani, the hadith not necessarily any, uh, connected all the way to the person who had said it, but... It is said that when Jibreel alayhi salam, before they threw him in the fire, came and asked uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Qala alaka haja, qala amma ilayka fala. He says, do you need anything? He says, as, for, as from you, I don't need anything. Huh? Which is, subhanAllah, is amazing in itself. Right? And imagine, you know, you're going to be burned alive, be thrown in it, and you can see, you can sense that heat coming from that fire. And no one no less than Jibreel alayhi salam coming and asks you, do you need anything? You know, you tell him, you know what, all of these people, just kill them. Mm-hmm. He can. طيب? You know all of these people, kill them. You know that fire, just spit on it. Just spit on it. You know, just carry me out. You can just ask for anything. Anything. Huh? And, and one of us, subhanAllah, <laughs> if it was me, I'd say, you're here. <laughs> you're finally here. <laughs> but where were you? You left me till the end. Come on, you know, I mean, yeah, please take me as soon as possible, you know. But then he says, what, you, you know how calm he is? He says, do you need anything? He says, from you, I don't need anything, right? I know the one who's going to save me. I know, I, my, so that's why his trust is in Allah, Azza wa Jal, completely, subhanAllah. Now, so here, you know, related to this, um, now, well, we, well, I think we'll leave it, inshallah, because it's connected to another incident, so we'll leave that, inshallah. Um, another also incident of his da'wah, uh, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, is the one, one in the, what Allah mentions in the Quran, أَلَمْ تَرَى إِلَى الَّذِي حَاجَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي رَبِّهِ إِنْ أَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكِ Do you know the news or the story of one who was arguing with Ibrahim, alayhi salam? Because he has power, Allah had given him power, and that pushed him to make the following argument. So it made him rebellious, thinking that he can be like Allah Azza wa Jal, or he can be a partner with Allah in some of his attributes. إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ So this exchange is Ibrahim giving da'wah to this king, powerful king. So here da'wah, Ibrahim's da'wah is to his father, and we're going to see him talking to his father, inshallah, soon. He's talking to his father, he's talking to his people, but also he's talking to kings. So he's here talking to the kings and he said, Rabbi الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيت Allah, my Rabb, is the one who brings death and life. Brings death, brings life and brings death. قَالَ أَنَا أُحْيِي وَأُمِيت He says, I can do the same. I can bring life and I can bring death. 
And it is said that what he did is that he brought two prisoners, right? And he said to one, I pardon you, so this is life, and I kill you, so this is death. I also control life and death. Huh? And that is what, that's, that's blindness. And that's the blindness that power brings, that you think you actually have control when you can bring two people and you say, you live and you die. Uh, that's arrogance and blindness. Now, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, and this is the brilliance of Ibrahim and the wisdom of Ibrahim. And this tells you that not every argument is worth pursuing because he's going to stop him and say, wait, wait, this is different. This is not like this and like that, but he knew the mentality of the person that he's talking to. So he wants to, you know, subhanAllah, reach the conclusion that he wants to reach in the shortest and clearest of ways. I'm not going to sit and talk to you about that this life is different than that and this death is different than this. It's not the same because you didn't create this person. You did not create him. So how is this giving life or giving death? So he said, he moved on to something that is clear and something that that person cannot argue about. He says, Allah Azza Jal brings the sun from the east to bring it from the west. That's it. That is it. So the one who disbelieved had no answer to this, had no reply. That was, that was it. And that tells you, subhanAllah, not everybody is able to do this. But it tells you that when you, you have to understand the mentality of the person who is talking to you and his comprehension. And don't engage with him in, fruitless, in a fruitless argument. If that thing is not working, he's not understanding, move on to something that he can understand. Here, he says, okay, this is under your control, you're telling me, and you can bring this person and that person, he pers this person can be alive, this person can be dead. I'm going to point to something that is beyond your control, the sun. Reverse it, if you have power. He says, no, that's it. That, that was it. And that was it. So this is another encounter of Ibrahim alayhi salam. It doesn't tell us who is that person, who is that king, uh, what area where he's in, but Allahu A'lam uh, who he was. But it tells you, subhanAllah, about his, again, his, uh, his courage, that he's able to confront a king like that, and nothing happens to it. No. Now, let, let's see in the exchange with his uh, father. And there is this whole story with Ibrahim and his father. Allah Azza wa Jal says with Kurfil Kitabi Ibrahim in Nahukana Sadiq and Nabiya mentioned in the book Ibrahim, who was both a Sadiq and a prophet. It khalali abihi. He's talking to his father. Ya abati, my father. Why do you worship what does not hear and does not see and does not help you in any in any meaningful way? Ya abati inni kaja ani minal ilmi malam ya tik. Ya oh my father, I have knowledge that has not reached you. See how he's talking to his father. And his father is what? A kafir. He's, an, he's not a Muslim. And his father is someone who opposes the call of Ibrahim and opposes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet in every address, in the beginning of every ayah, oh, how does he begin? By talking to him? Ya abati. Oh my father. Oh my father. Oh my father. Right? So, and you can understand, subhanAllah, the gentleness of Ibrahim. I mean, I wanted, what, one of the things I want you to notice about Ibrahim, one of his dominant features is rahmah. You'll see it in Ibrahim, and softness of the heart. Uh, and this is something that Allah Azza Jal loves. So when he's talking to his father, you can imagine what type of, you can, can you imagine what type of son Ibrahim must have been? What type of son would he be? Huh? The best Right? His akhlaq. Imagine the akhlaq of Ibrahim. His father asks him to do something, he will do it. Asks him not to do something, he wouldn't do it. That would be, this thing would be the only thing where he went against his father in doing. Otherwise, he's an obedient son because he's Ibrahim alayhi salam. So you can imagine the best of akhlaq, the best of behavior. And you, you may have problems with your son, he doesn't listen to me. But what if he listens to you all the time? Obeys you all the time? You will love him, right? You will love him more than anything. Ibrahim alayhi salam is the best son. Huh? Because he's the best. So he, you can see it reflected here. Ya abati, my father. I have knowledge that you do not have. So follow me and I will guide you to a straight path. My father, ya abati, do not worship the shaitan. La ta'budi shaitan. What does it mean here, la ta'budi shaitan? Did they worship the shaitan? He says, do not listen to the shaitan. Do not listen, because when you listen to the shaitan, you're worshiping the shaitan. When you listen to the shaitan, you're submitting to him. 
And that is, in a sense, a type of worship. In addition to it, what? In addition to it, what? When a person worships anything other than Allah Azza wa Jal, be it an idol, be it the sun, be it anything else, the shaitan goes and stands in it, inside it, or behind it, or next to it, so that when you're prostrating, you're prostrating to who? The shaitan. That's why the Prophet وسلم, he says, in the shaitan. He says the sun when it rises, rises between the horns of a devil. And the shaitan a devil? The shaitan is not a devil. The, not the shaitan is a devil. What does it mean rises between the horns of a devil? It means when it rises, the shaitan is right there. Because those who worship the sun, when do they, what do they, when do, where do they worship the sun? At what time? When it rises. Right? When it rises, they worship the sun. So as it is rising, the shaitan is right in front. So that when they are honoring and worshiping and bowing to the sun, they're doing that to the shaitan as well. You follow? Right? When you see, when some people still worship idols today. Sahih? So when they say, for instance, this particular idol, right, uh, there are some uh, tears coming down from the eye or milk coming down, I don't know from what, and that's a miracle, and everybody goes there and they start seeking blessing from an idol. Who's doing that? The shayateen. If they hear somebody speaking from inside that idol, who's doing that? So the shaitan goes inside, and when they are worshipping, bowing, and offering, they're offering to the shaitan. So he says, Ya abati la ta'bud shaitan, do not worship the shaitan. In the shaitan, the shaitan is disobedient to the Rahman. Ya abati inni ayakha, inni akhafu adabu min rahman He says, my father, I'm afraid that you are going to be touched with punishment coming to you from Ar-Rahman. Subhanallah, notice why did he choose punishment coming from Ar-Rahman? He says, he says, can you imagine you're going to make Ar-Rahman upset? He's not saying you're going to make you know, the powerful upset. Al-Qawi or Al-Aziz, which are attributes of Allah Azza wa He had chosen the attribute of Ar-Rahma. He says, what you are doing is going to make even Ar-Rahman upset with you, that even Ar-Rahman is going to punish you. Don't do this. Huh? It's like you're telling somebody, for instance, this someone is so kind and so mellow and so nice, but if you keep pushing him, he's, he's going to be upset with you, meaning that you pushed it, you took it all the way to the extreme. Now he has no patience with you anymore. He says, you're doing this, and you're, you're, you're jeopardizing your own life, and you're, subhanAllah, you're doing this to Ar-Rahman, and I'm afraid that even Ar-Rahman uh, is not going to have patience with you, and he's going to punish you, right? So, فَتَكُونَ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَّ So you're going, to be, you're going to be a friend of the shaitan. After all of this exchange, and the way that Ibrahim السلام, spoke to his father, قَالَ أَرَاغِبٌ أَنْتَ عَنْ آلِهَةِ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ He says, you don't want my idols? You don't like them? You want to go away and you don't want to worship them? He said, if you're not going to stop doing this, I'm going to stone you to death. He says, leave me. Don't even talk to me and I don't want to talk to you for a long extended time. So see the exchange. The rahmah that has come from Ibrahim towards his father. And typically, it's the parents who would have more rahmah than the kids towards his parents. The parents. But here it's the opposite. Rahma and rahma here. Is, is a feature of the believer. That's why he has rahmah. And uh, lack of it is a feature of the non-believer. The non-believer, a feature of the non-believer, common is that they will not have as much rahmah, should not have as much rahmah as the believers. So you see rahmah of Ibrahim towards his father. But when he, he comes to him, what does he tell him? He tells, if you're not going to worship these things and you're going to talk bad about them, I'm going to stone you to death. And I don't want to even talk to you. You know, you know get away from me. What does he say? Does he, does he curse him back? Huh. What does he say? قَالَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ He says, salam be upon you. Meaning you're not going to hear anything from me that's going to upset you. Salam meaning in a sense, you're safe from me. Safe from any harm that's going to come from me. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ سَأَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكَ رَبِّي I'll ask Allah to forgive you. إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِحَفِيَّةٌ huh? I'm, I'm, I'm close to Allah Azza wa and He honors me. And I'm going to, you know, boycott, leave you, migrate that thing that, you know, upsets Allah Azza wa Jal. What you call instead of Allah, I'm going to leave it and turn away from it. 
and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal because I will not be miserable when I ask Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is the ayah that I mentioned. فَلَمَّا اَعْتَزَلَهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَهَبْنَ لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبُ When he turned away from what they worshipped instead of Allah Azza wa Jal, we gave him Ishaq and Ya'qub. Because he became alone. Huh? He left his father. You see sometimes, you know, when you say to someone, migrate, migrate and leave my family, migrate and leave my money, migrate and leave everything that I know, migrate and leave everything that I love, migrate for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, Wallahi, it is difficult. But he says, okay, you're going to leave your family, I'll give you a different family. Huh? Better than the ones that you've left. If, in fact, if you have stayed with them, you'd be miserable. Now you'll be a lot better because you've done this for Allah Azza wa Jal. And, in, and on top of that, everybody will be honoring you and everybody will be mentioning your name. As we said, you, all of us mention his name every single day because Ibrahim took these steps to please Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, we said that there is a story between, and that's not the end of story between Ibrahim and his father. طيب. Another ayah says, adds to that story. Allah Azza wa Jal, he, says you have, he said, you have a good example, Uswa Hasana, in Ibrahim and those who are with them. When they said to their people, he says, we're innocent of you, uh, and what you worship instead of Allah Azza wa Jal, etc., etc., but I want to come here. He says, except Ibrahim saying to his father, La astaghfiranna lak. Meaning, follow Ibrahim in what he has done. And you have good example in him, except in his promise to his father that I will ask Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive you. وَمَا أَمْلِكُ لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ I have no power to help you with Allah Azza wa Jal except asking Allah to forgive you. So Allah Azza wa Jal is saying what? Is saying that follow him in everything except then his promise to ask forgiveness for his father. Okay, more. Allah Azza wa Jal adds. Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَا كَانَ لِلنَّبِيِّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ He says, it's not for the Prophet and for the believers to ask for forgiveness for those who are mushrikun, had committed shirk in Allah Azza wa Jal, even if they are uli qurba, even if they are their relatives. Min ba'di ma tabayyana lahum annahum ashabul jaheem. After they know that they are of the people of hellfire. As long as they're alive, you can ask Allah to forgive them. And you can ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide them as long as they're alive. If they die on disbelief, you cannot. We cannot. You cannot ask it. Allah alam what's going to happen to them. Maybe a minute before their death, they accepted Islam. Maybe. Who knows? But we don't know that to be the truth, right? We don't know that that has happened. If we do not, we cannot ask Allah Azza wa to forgive them. Then Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اسْتِغْفَارُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا أَبِهِ إِلَّا عَنْ مَوْعِدَةٍ وَعَدَهَا إِيَّاهِ Ibrahim's asking of forgiveness for his father only happened because he promised him that he will do that. But when he knew that he was an enemy of Allah Azza wa Jal, he declared himself innocent of him. So it tells you about what happened with Ibrahim and his father. That is, yes, he promised him. And yes, he asked Allah Azza wa Jal to forgive him. But when he knew from Allah Azza wa Jal that his, uh, that Ibrahim, that his father was an enemy of Allah Azza wa Jal, he stopped. And the conclusion of this story comes in a hadith. Because Ibrahim will meet his father on the Day of Judgment. يَلْقَى إِبْرَاهِيمُ أَبَاهُ آزَر The Prophet says, Ibrahim will see his father Azar on the Day of Judgment and his face will be black, dark, filled with dust. And Ibrahim will tell him, Father, did I not tell you not to disobey me? He says, Father, he tells him, Today I will not disobey you. Today I will do what you asked me to do. So Ibrahim goes to Allah Azza wa and he says, Ya Allah, you promised me. You promised me that you're not going to dishonor me, disgrace me when you resurrect me. What is a great dishonor than putting my father in hellfire? What is a greater disgrace that my father is going to go to hellfire? أَخْزَ مِنْ أَبِي الْأَبْعَدِ فَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ إِنِّي حَرَّمْتُ الْجَنَّةَ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ Allah says, you know, I made Jannah forbidden for those who disbelieve. Then he will ask Ibrahim, where is your father? Huh? Then Ibrahim will say, he was taken. And Ibrahim was, as it was around Ibrahim, as he was talking, then he was taken. And Allah will ask him, where is your father? He says, he is taken. He says, look under your feet. And he looks under his feet, and he sees a hyena 
that is smeared with feces, that is his father. Allah has hyena, dab, an animal. Huh? So Allah has changed him into an animal and is smeared with feces. So of course, Ibrahim is disgusted by that sight. Then that animal is taken and thrown into hellfire. Right? So why does Allah Azza wa Jal change him like that? Still, it's the same person, but why does Allah change him? Hmm? To comfort to Ibrahim. So Ibrahim does not see his father anymore. Because that's difficult, right? And it's a dishonor, maybe, as Ibrahim has said, but it's difficult for him to see his father, and now that father is going to be dragged all the way into hellfire. So it's hard for him. And it was hard for him, subhanAllah, for him, as he's talking, he says, it, it hurts. So Allah changed the image so he does not see his father anymore and he's, you know, and he, that, that, that animal is smeared with feces so that he'd be disgusted by that sight, by that smell and he does not feel anything there. And then he takes him and he throws him into the fire. So that's the story of Ibrahim and his father. And the thing that I wanted to uh, mention, of course, is when Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Inni saqim, I'm sick. When he said, Bal fa'alahu kabirum hadha, the big one did that. Well, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna Ibrahim lam yakdhib illa thalatha kadhibat. He said, Ibrahim lied only three times. Thintani minhuma fi dhatillah. Two of them for the sake of Allah azza wa jal. So first of all, imagine if you can actually count in the number of times you've lied. Huh? I have lied only three times in my life. Alhamdulillah, I don't have anything else. At least I know that there are only three. So you say he only lied three times. So every other statement that comes out of his mouth is what? The truth. So that's, that's one. Okay, and of the three, two are for the sake of who? Allah. Does that count as a lie? No, it doesn't really count as a lie. And even they say it is not, it's not really, really a lie in a sense that he was, he was teaching them. And even subhanAllah, when he says, Inni saqim, he says, I am sick. It could mean I'm going to be sick later, or I'm going to be sick, or I'm sick of you, whatever it is, right? It, it, there is a double meaning to it. That big one has done that, right? There will be a double meaning to it. But anyway, two of them, for the sake of Allah Azza wa What is the third one? The third one, what? Ah, na'am, with Sarah. So this is after Ibrahim alayhi salam migrates. Uh, so he moves from, um, we assume, Wallahu alam Iraq, he moves to the uh, blessed land to Philistine. And then they move. I mean, and the, he's on a journey because uh, this has to be somewhere else and it has to be Egypt. So he's in that area. And he's with Sarah. And Sarah is his wife. And Sarah is beautiful. So he goes to this land. And he comes to what is called Jabbar min al-Jababira, one mighty king of the mighty kings of the lands. So maybe, wallahu alam, he's giving him da'wah, right? Or he's just passing through, we don't know. So it is said, it is said to that king, it is mentioned, you know what? Somebody came into the land and he has the most beautiful woman. You could see. She should be yours. So he calls him and he says, who is she? Who is she to you? Now Ibrahim says, she's my sister. And then he goes back to Sarah and he says, he called me and he asked me, who are you? And I said, your sister. Because I know if I said, if he said what, my wife, what is he going to do? Kill him. And he said, I said, my sister. You know, don't, don't deny this when he talks to you. And indeed, I, I know no one else, no believers in this land except me and you. So is she his sister or not? Huh? Sister in Islam or not? Yeah, yeah, sister in Islam, right? So was he really lying or there's a double meaning? There's a double meaning. This is what they call ma'arid. Ma'arid. But do not use the ma'arid unless you have to. There's a double meaning. Huh? Do not use it because it, otherwise it will be counted as a lie. Unless you have to, you really have to. Instead of lying, you can use it. But otherwise, do not use it. Because it will count as a lie and people, if they find out, they're not going to trust you anymore, by the way. So... There is no one in this land, a believer except me and you. So when he says, ask you, says, you're my sister. So he called her. And she came into his court. She came into the court. He went to grab her. And she made dua against him. 
she made dua against him. In another hadith, it says here that the dua that she made, she said, Ya Allah, if you know that I am worshipping you alone and that I'm a chaste woman, right? that I've only been with my husband and no one else, if you Allah know that the case, protect me from this man. So when he came to grab her, he suffered from a seizure. He says, you know, he went to the ground and he was kicking he, as if somebody was choking him. He couldn't. Qala, so he says, He says, ask Allah, huh? ask Allah to, to take this away from me and I will not harm you. She see, so prayed and then he was released from that seizure. Again, he went to do the same thing to her. She made dua again, the same dua again. And he, again, he was seized. فأخذ. And he was again kicking, screaming. He couldn't be able to do anything. Rolling on the ground. He says, He says, ask Allah to uh, save me from this and I will not harm you. She did that. A third time he went to do this. I don't know why it always has to be one, two, and the third time till you learn your lesson. You should have stopped. Again, he went to go to do it a third time. Makes dua, goes through the same you know, ordeal. He says, make dua and then you know, ask Allah to save me and I will not harm you. She does that. And then when he comes out of it, he says, you didn't bring me a human being. You brought me a devil. Take her away from me. Huh? Take her away from me. So, and he gave her who? Hajar. So he gave her Hajar. So she goes back to Ibrahim alayhi salam, and Ibrahim alayhi salam is standing in salah. So you can imagine Ibrahim. What is happening to Ibrahim? He's, he's um, alone. He doesn't have any power to repel his evil. So the only thing that he could do is that probably from the time that she left till she came, he's standing in salah. Right? He's standing in salah. So in salah, right, she comes. فَأَشَارَ لَهَا مَا You know, it's like, what happened? What happened? قَالَ قَالَتْ رَدَّ اللَّهُ كَيْدَ الْكَافِرِ Allah Azza wa repelled uh, the plot of the disbeliever وَأَخْدَمَ هَاجَرْ And he brought Hajar as a servant, as a helper. So this is the third time that Ibrahim alayhi salam has lied. That is his third lie. And it tells you about how Hajar came into the possession or into the company of this blessed family. And what comes, you know, as, as a consequence. Now, um, na'am. Na'am, inshallah. So we'll continue, inshallah, now. We're talking about, oh, I think we should leave this till next time, inshallah. To see just if you have questions, otherwise we'll continue. But let me see, inshallah, if you have questions about this, because maybe from ne next week, inshallah, we'll talk about uh, the birth of Ismail alayhi salam and then what happened with Ishaq and all of that. Maybe conclude the entire story, inshallah. But let me just see, inshallah, if you have questions, because we're close to Isha and I don't want to, yeah. Was Ishaq a prophet? Yes, and we will talk about him, inshallah. He was a prophet indeed. And we'll talk about them in the last No. Yeah. About? Yeah, yeah, Abati or Ya Abdi? Yeah, Abdi. So the meaning of the word Abdi, yani? Yeah. 